Stiff person syndrome uh, is a rare neuroimmunological disorder. Um, most often neuromuscular doctors will get involved. I've gotten involved here at Hopkins um, because I'm neuroimmunology trained and at the core of this disease it seems to be an immune mediated disorder. Um, and it's a devastating disease. The incidence, if you look um, in published data that's out there, one in a million probably more common than that, um, and I'll get to that in a minute. The one in a million speaks to sort of the classic stiff person syndrome, which was initially described in the 1950s, where someone will present uh, to clinic with uh, their axial muscles and torso is quite rigid. Uh, they may have some tightness in their legs, uh, which causes them some gait problems, balance problems. They get horrific spasms in really any muscle within the body, uh, but the focus within the classic uh, stiff person syndrome is really in the axial, lower back, abdominal muscles, legs, and it's quite painful. So people will go around with these chronic pain syndromes, go to one doctor to another trying to figure out what's causing this really bad spasm pain syndrome. Um, sometimes they get labeled crazy because on exam, Early on, there aren't the hallmark features of stiff person syndrome, which include hyperlordosis, spasticity, uh, and myelopathy. Uh, and often that takes a little bit of time to develop. And once you have those hallmark signs on exam and you put it together with their symptoms, then people, uh, even the rare conditions, say, oh, maybe this is something like stiff person syndrome. Um, but on average, because of how rare it is, and how early on in the disease uh, it can mimic a lot of other conditions. Uh, it takes about seven years for people to get diagnosed from symptom onset to actual diagnosis. Uh, and it's really when people start having more disability that that comes to the doctor's attention and then they seek out a lot of subspecialty evaluations because of the chronic pain, including rheumatology, pain management. Um, but one of the biggest problems with this disease is falls. They have a lot of postural instability from their rigidity that they develop in their axial uh, skeleton and then also the spasms. And so just walking down the street, they could have a spasm and fall. And they're not able to guard themselves because of the postural instability and the reflex that goes with that, they lose. Um, and when we look at who most commonly is affected, of course it's rare, right, one in a million, um, it seems to be adults, um, and usually middle to later in years, uh, and there seems to be a female uh, predominance. Uh, we have a, a database that we're uh, compiling right now uh, that's longitudinal in nature, and um, in our database it looks like females by uh, leaps and bounds are more commonly affected than, than men with this condition. And why I bring that up is interesting, if you read the first reports, it was actually called stiff man syndrome. But the first case report was actually on a woman. So um, it's just sort of a little background on that. Um, but it, it's a, from a, the core immunological dysregulation that's happening, it's uh, quite complex. And we actually uh, are a little bit behind, uh, I think, the game with some of our other autoimmune disorders and really understanding what's truly going on in these uh, patients. And so up to 80% of patients you'll, will find what's called anti-GAD antibodies in their blood. And that's anti-glutamic acid decarboxylase. Um, GAD is the rate limiting enzyme in the body for GABA. And GABA um, is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter within the, the nervous system. And what happens is it's sort of a regulator of the nervous system. So when GABA levels are decreased, there's hyperexcitability that happens within the nervous system. That hyperexcitability can result in what we see in stiff person syndrome, um, the spasms, the rigidity, the tightness. And it's this overstimulation that occurs that leads to the disability uh, in uh, SPS. Um, and so you have these anti GAD antibodies that are decreasing, you know, by binding and preventing the enzyme that's helping 
upregulate or uh, help in GABA be present, decrease GABA, and then you have this hyperexcitability state. But it's only up to 80% of people have these antibodies. So there's something else going on, right? Um, and there's been a number of studies recently showing that T cells actually seem to play a role as well. And there's a lot of interaction between B cells and T cells in crosstalk. And so we're still learning. Um, what we're doing here at Hopkins is we're looking um, prospectively and collecting samples from patients uh, to better define sort of what the immune signature may be in a large cohort of stiff person patients. And we're looking at blood and then also some spinal fluid uh, markers to try to better understand in a larger population, you know, is it really more T cell mediated disease? Is it more B cell mediated disease? Or in a given individual, is it sort of like a flip of a coin? Which one is doing more of the damage or uh, pushing the disease, you know, forward? And so we're hopeful that, you know, with more samples um, that we collect and more analyses, we'll have a better idea of from a pathobiology or pathophysiology point of view, what is causing the disease so we can develop better treatments.